book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran is our guidebook. It is our guidebook for navigating the worldly life, its trials, its tribulations, but also its successes. The Quran is guidance, it is light, and it's, the, the, it's what leads one to happiness in the dunya, but simultaneously it provides the straight and narrow path to lead to triumph in the hereafter. This is for the one who reflects upon its verses and acts upon what it contains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyada dabaru ayyatihi wa liyata dhakara ulul al bab. This is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, O Prophet, so that they may contemplate its verses and people of reason may be mindful. And in the Quran, we can see that there are acts of worship that are commanded of the believer by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each one having corresponding rewards for its action. And I just want to touch on four of these today. That is dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, istighfar, seeking forgiveness for our misdeeds from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shukr or gratitude of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and dua, supplication for our desires and to guard us from our fears, ask of the one who can provide us with the desired outcomes. So there are four verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes these actions. Regarding dhikr, he says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Very simple. So remember me, I'll remember you. Regarding istighfar, he says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And Allah would not punish them while they seek forgiveness. Regarding shukr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And remember when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will certainly give you more. And regarding dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord says, call upon me and I will respond to you. So let us approach these four verses and see what they can provide to the believer who reflects upon their meanings. So we saw the first one, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, I will remember you. What an amazing sentiment this is. What an action whose outcome provides the greatest reward. It is an un insurmountable, inidentifiable honor for when a believer remembers their Lord most glorified. Even if there was no condition for it, no response and no reward. But because the Lord most glorified is our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the disposer of our affairs. He is the provider of blessings upon us. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He deserves remembrance, magnification, love and servitude as a result of His greatness, His ability, His mercy, His encompassing of everything, because of His names, His attributes, His actions and His beneficence to His servants, the believer is taking it one step further. The believer who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honored immensely. Because this remembering believer is given a reward, a reward that is far greater than their remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers him. The creator remembers the creation. Just think about that for a second. It's such a profound and mind-boggling phenomenon for one who truly reflects upon it, the magnitude of its meaning. This is no small feat. If a believer truly reflects upon this verse, then their tongue would never become weary from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Creator remembers the creation. Who is this creation? This little creation that is worthy enough that the Creator remembers them. For this person is but an atom, and much less compared to the many countless creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only the only one who can enum enumerate the number of creation is Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see details about this that come in authentic hadith of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors his created servant when they remember him. Uh, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَقُولُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ أَنَا عِنْدِ الذَّانِ عَبْدِ بِهِ وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَانِي فَإِن ذَكَرَانِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتَهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَإِن ذَكَرَانِي فِي مَالَىٰ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَالَىٰ خَيْرٍ مِنْهُمْ Allah the Most High said, I am as my servant thinks of me. And I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me to himself, I remember him to myself. And if he remembers me in a gathering, then I remember him in a gathering better than that. And it is no wonder that our mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, Can a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah ala kulli ahyani? The Messenger of Allah used to remember Allah in all circumstances. And the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can be both general and it can be specific. And the general remembrance is in the heart and on the tongue and on the limbs. 
And every righteous deed is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as refraining from every forbidden deed is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is because the driver of the positive action and the driver of the refrain from the negative action is servitude to the Creator, which aims to magnify Him, to love Him, to hope in Him, to fear Him and to venerate Him. And it is thusly that the true believer's entire life becomes consumed by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as for the specific rem remembrance of Allah, it is what is uttered with the tongue, with affirmations that are in the heart simultaneously. When you say, La ilaha illallah, when you say Allahu Akbar, when you say Alhamdulillah, when you seek forgiveness, when you supplicate, and when you recite the Quran. So then we go again to the second of the verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُؤَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ and Allah would not punish them while they seek forgiveness. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said regarding the believers, they had two guarantees of safety, the Prophet of Allah and seeking forgiveness. So the Prophet left, but seeking forgiveness remained. It is known that Ibn Adam, they make mistakes, and sins are a reason for punishment. But it is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that punishment is pushed away from individuals and from groups when they seek genuine forgiveness from the Almighty. And it is for that reason that the messengers throughout history commanded their communities to seek forgiveness. And in a day, the Prophet ﷺ, he used to seek forgiveness from Allah more than 70 times. And one of the scholars once said, increase seeking forgiveness in your homes and on your tables and on your roads and in your markets and in your gatherings and wherever you are, for you know not when the forgiveness will descend. So seek not, so spare not from seeking forgiveness. And then we see in the third of the four verses, And remember when your Lord proclaimed, If you are grateful, I will certainly give you more. So the bounties that are bestowed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are preserved. They grow and they increase by having gratitude for them. And they are also removed by being ungrateful for them and for taking them for granted. Gratitude is the expression of the impacts of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue of the believer. And it's through praising and admitting. And it is also upon the believer's heart through attestation and love. And it is upon the limbs of the believer through submission and obedience. And then gratitude is built upon principles such as submission of the one who is grateful to the one who is being thanked. Love for the Creator, admitting His favor, and not using what he bestows upon us for what he hates. <clears throat> Yet, the only thing that some people know about gratitude is the gratitude of the tongue. And as such, they're only informed of a small fraction of gratitude. And that is, pray they only praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a few instances of blessing. He reminds us subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَأَمَّا بِالنِّعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ And proclaim the blessing of your Lord. اِعْمَلُوا عَلَى دَاوُودَ الشُّكْرَى Work, O family of David, in gratitude, and only a few of my servants are grateful. This is what the Prophet said. Indeed, Allah loves to see the results of His favors upon His servants. And from the consequences of a favor which a person expresses is gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Him for what He deserves and spending in the avenues of good. And this type of expression of the favor is gratitude by both speech and by action. And the believers, we were commanded to be grateful. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, kulli min tayyibati ma razaqnakum wa shkuru lillah, wa shkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun. O believers, eat from the good things we have provided for you, and give thanks to Allah if you truly worship Him alone. And this verse, it indicates that from the highest displays of servitude, is gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For there is no servitude without gratitude and no gratitude without servitude. So then we come to the final of the four verses. And your Lord says, call upon me, I will respond to you. For the basis of this verse is that the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is realized for the believer who supplicates honestly and truthfully. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He bases the response upon the supplication. But He promised with responding and His response is not broken. So the one supplicating, there are instances 
in which they may unknowingly supplicate for something that may result in harm for them. As a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He would turn it away from them. And this is a mercy to them. And He gives them better than what they asked for. Yet we have in some of those instances, believers who may begin to think badly of their Lord as a result. They assume that He did not respond to them because they know not of His wisdom. And this meaning is confirmed in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ who said, There is not a Muslim upon the earth who calls upon Allah with any supplication, except that Allah grants it to him, or he turns away from him the like of it in evil, as long as he does not supplicate for something sinful or the severing of the ties of kinship. So then a man from the people said, What if we should increase in it? And the Prophet said, With Allah there is more. And for this reason, Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, I do not bear the worry of the response, rather I bear the worry of supplicating. For if I was inspired to supplicate, then the response comes with it. So we as believers, we should take care to reflect upon the verses of the Noble Qur'an, and especially the verses that they have deeds, specific actionable deeds, with specific rewards associated with them, so that we can act upon these frequently and without haste, so that we can earn the rewards due upon completing them. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did not create the creation except to worship Him alone and to worship Him without any partners. And remembrance, gratitude, seeking repentance and supplication, these are among the greatest acts of worship that bring one closer to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that reason, commanding them was emphasized in the Qur'an. And the messengers commanded them to their followers. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He urged us towards them. So again, going through these remembrance, in its general meanings, it includes the entire religion. It applies to acts of worship of the heart, the tongue and the limbs, just as it includes the worships of doing and desisting. And its specific meaning is the remembrance of the tongue and of the heart. And from among them is the remembrances of the morning, of the evening, of the sleep, and of the arising. And these remembrances after the prayers and other types of remembrances, whether they are restricted to a particular situation or unrestricted dhikr, done freely. And gratitude preserves the favors and it repels the retribution. And it is through the heart, the tongue, and the limbs as well. Now although it is inevitable that a person will make a mistake, we will all fall short from time to time. Eventually we'll commit a sin or we'll forget an act of obedience that is required of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained seeking forgiveness because of this. It erases the effects of our sins and instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He replaces them with good deeds in their stead. So we should aim to follow the example of our father Adam alayhi salam when he hastened to repent and seek forgiveness after he fell into sin. Then Adam was inspired with words of prayer by his Lord. So he accepted his repentance. Surely Allah is the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. And when it comes to supplication, we should remember that we all have needs in this world, whether that be religious needs, something that we're falling short of when it comes to the deen. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we supplicate to our Lord in complete obedience to Him, and in complete, um, in complete isolation, in complete sincerity, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can fulfill these needs for us and restore us on the straight path. Or if we have needs of the world, that we should only be we requesting from the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or if we have needs in the hereafter, desires of the hereafter, that we should request for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant. A person who makes plentiful dua, he is not let down of his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. For dua is an act of worship for which a person is rewarded in addition to what they are given in the answering of their supplication. And if one supplicates plentifully in times of ease, then it is fitting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he responds to him during times of adversity. This is in accordance with what he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعَوَاتَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَانَ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَأَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِلَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَأَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِلَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ When my servants ask you, O Prophet, about me, I am truly near. I respond to one's prayer when they call upon me. So let them respond with obedience to me and believe in me. Perhaps they will be guided, be guided to the right way. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefits us and to bless us to act upon what He taught us and to make us amongst His righteous servants.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله المستفى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أحدنا في من حديت وعافنا في من أفيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما عطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يذل من وليت فبركت ربنا وتعاليت يا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل وإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون Indeed Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression. He admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded. So remember Allah and He will remember you. Thank Him for His favors and He will increase you therein. And seek forgiveness from Him and He will forgive you. And be conscious of Him and He'll provide you a way out of difficult matters. So on this blessed day, we remember these four essential commands from the Quran that guide our daily lives and strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is dhikr, istighfar, shukr, and dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. O you who believe, remember Allah with frequent remembrance. Dhikr is a fundamental act of worship. It keeps the heart and soul connected to the Creator. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us that comparison of one who compares Allah, one who remembers Allah, and one who does not remember Allah, is like that of the living and of the dead. Through dhikr, we keep our hearts alive and attentive to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. It brings tranquility, it brings peace, and it brings a sense of purpose. Dhikr is a cleansing of the heart. It purifies the soul, and it ensures that we remain mindful of our actions and our intentions. Furthermore, as human beings, we are prone to make mistakes and commit sins. And istighfar is a, meaning, a means of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we commit these th sins, we acknowledge our shortcomings and we seek his pardon. The Prophet ﷺ reminded us that by Allah, he seeks the forgiveness of Allah and repents to him more than 70 times in a day. So istighfar, it, it is something that we should do plentifully as the Prophet did. And it's not merely a verbal act. It is an expression of sincere regret. And it is a commitment to refrain from repetition of sin. When we seek forgiveness, we are humbling ourselves before our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are recognizing His immense mercy and His immense compassion. And this is a means of cleansing our hearts from the burden of sin and as a way to renew our covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then of course there is shukr, an acknowledgement from the believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's countless blessings. It is an attitude, a way of life almost, that permeates the thoughts, the words and the actions. And the Prophet said that he who does not thank people does not thank Allah. So expressing gratitude involves recognizing the blessings that we have, no matter how small they may be, and showing appreciation not only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also to those around us who benefit us. It means maximizing the blessings that we have been given in ways that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while also benefiting our fellow believers. And finally, we come back to dua, a powerful, powerful tool for the believer. It is a direct line of communication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A place where we can express our deepest desires, our needs and our worries, where we can be completely vulnerable. The Prophet said that dua is the essence of worship. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Through dua we demonstrate our dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We seek His assistance in our affairs and we place our trust in His wisdom and His mercy. And dua is something that can be made at any time, in any place. It is a means of drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking His guidance and support in every aspect of our lives. So we should hasten to it plentifully. And these four commands, they are interconnected. They form a holistic approach to worship and they guide us to leading a life that is most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr keeps our hearts alive and our minds focused on our Lord. Istighfar purifies our souls and brings us closer to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr cultivates a sense of contentment 
and appreciations for the blessings of our Lord. And dua strengthens our reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And our, it strengthens our relationship with Him and our connection to Him. So by incorporating these practices into our daily lives, we can ensure that we are constantly engaged in worship and that we're constantly seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are constantly expressing gratitude to Him and that we are turning to Him in our times of need, whether they be good or bad. So we should set aside time for dhikr. We should allocate specific times during our day for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it's as simple as right after the prayer. It could be while commuting, it could be before sleeping, but we should regularly do it. One of my teachers used to commute to San Francisco from San Ramon. And he used to make dhikr of Allah every single second of that commute. <coughs> For those of you commuting, that's not a, not a short drive, especially the traffic. But every avenue that he wanted, every door that he sought, it would open for him plentifully and then some. So this is not something we should take lightly, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should regularly also seek istighfar. We should make it a habit to seek forgiveness from our Lord. Again, at the bare minimum, at the end of each prayer, we should reflect on our actions daily and we should sincerely repent for any shortcomings or sins thereof. And of course we should practice gratitude daily, verbally thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His blessings and reciprocating that through actions and appreciation to those around us in acts of charity and acts of kindness. And we should make dua a daily practice, again setting aside time each day for it. We should use the duas from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and personalize them to express our own needs and desires. So let us strive to embody these four commandments in our daily lives. Let us engage in dhikr to keep our hearts connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us seek istighfar to cleanse our souls. Let us, uh, let us practice shukr to express our gratitude. And let us make dua to strengthen our reliance and our bond and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing so, we will not only enhance our spiritual well-being, but we will also lead lives that are most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to implement these practices in our lives. And we ask that He forgive us our sins, accept our gratitude, and respond to our supplications. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min al khairi kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma'alimna minhu. Wa ma lam na'lam. Wa na'udhu bika min al sharri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma'alimna minhu. Wa ma lam na'lam. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khairi ma sa'alaka abduka wa nabiyuka. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma adhabihi abduka wa nabiyuka. Allahumma inna nas'aluka jannata wa maqarraba ilayha min qawlan au amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al nar wa maqarraba ilayha min qawlan au amal. Wa nas'aluka an taj'ala kulla qada'in qadaytahu lana khairan. Ya Allah, guide us with those whom you have guided. Grant us well-being among those whom you have granted well-being. Be an ally to us along with those whom you are an ally to. And bless us with what you have bestowed upon us. Save us from the evil of what you have decreed. Ya Allah, we ask you for all that is good in this world and in the hereafter, what we know and what we do not. Ya Allah, we seek refuge with you from all evil in, the, in this world and in the hereafter, what we know and what we do not. Ya Allah, we ask you for the good that your servant and prophet has asked you for. And we seek refuge with you from the evil with which your servant and prophet has sought refuge. Ya Allah, we ask you for paradise for that which brings one closer to it in word and in deed. And Ya Allah, we seek refuge from you in you from hell and from that which brings one closer to it in word and in deed. And we ask you to make everything that you decree concerning us good. Ya Allah, we ask you to help us remember you, to thank you, to worship you in the best manner. And Ya Allah, please forgive us our sins, the major and the minor, the first and the last, the apparent and the hidden. Ya Allah, make us among your grateful servants and grant us the ability to express our gratitude in ways that is most pleasing to you. Ya Allah, respond to our dua, grant us with what is good for us in this world and the hereafter, and protect us from all harm. Ya Allah, we ask that you guide us to be a source of support and relief for the oppressed. And we ask you to grant the people of Palestine justice, peace, and freedom. We ask you, Ya Allah, for your forgiveness and your guidance. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen wa qeem salat al-dhikrihi.